All right, this video is going to be a little instruction on how to use table J. So right now you want to grab your reference table J, looks like that, and we're going to work from that position as we go along. So I've reproduced table J here on the board, and we want to just look at it a little bit to start with. First of all, it's called the activity series, or maybe better called the reactivity series. In other words, uh, the elements listed on this chart are shown in order of most reactive to least reactive. Now let's think of what that means, what we already know about chemistry. For metals, we know that the most reactive metals are the group one metals, and that's because they only have one valence electron, and they very easily donate that electron during a chemical reaction. You can verify that looking on chart S, you'll see that not only do metals have, uh, group one metals have very low electronegativities, but they also have low ionization energies. And so you'll notice the first uh, three or four listed here are, are the group one metals. So again, that sort of jives with what we already know, that the group one metals are the most reactive. No, notice next you'll see some of the group two metals, and it gets a little jumbled up here. There's sodium sneaking in down here, a little lower than some of the group ones and so on, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. Realize that the first eight or nine listed are the group one alkali metals and group two alkaline earth metals, which we already know are the most reactive. Let's think a little bit about what metals are trying to do also when they react. We know they're trying to lose electrons. That's the whole point of being a metal. So the most reactive metals, again, are the metals that are most likely to do that in a reaction. The most likely to lose electrons makes them most reactive. You'll notice down towards the bottom then that we have some of the metals that are over towards the, more towards the right in the periodic table in the transition metal area. And so they're becoming more and more non-metallic like and therefore are least reactive as metals. You'll notice hydrogen in here with a double asterisk on the, uh, on the chart, and that is a reference point uh, for discussion, and we'll, we'll get into that a little later. On the non-metal side, you'll notice just uh, the opposite, I guess, of what we notice on the uh, metal side. The most reactive non-metals are the ones that are most interested in gaining more electrons. So we know that from, again, past experience, Fluorine being the most electronegative element uh, has the highest desire for more electrons and then as you go down the halogen family they get less and less reactive. And so again I think you know that trend or that, that fact and keep in mind that nonmetals are considered most reactive uh, in terms of their desire for more electrons. The bigger the desire for more electrons the more reactive. Uh, okay so that's a little bit on how the chart is set up. What we're going to do now is teach you uh, how to use chart J to predict whether a reaction is spontaneous or not. In other words, spontaneous is a word chemists use, uh, and that simply means uh, will happen unaided uh, or without the uh, input of extra energy. Once the reaction is activated, it just continues on by itself at that point. So that's what spontaneous means. In practical terms, a battery is spontaneous. When you uh, plug the battery in to the device, it reacts spontaneously from that point on. It doesn't need a continual input of energy. Um, batteries that are in the act of being recharged, where you have to take them and plug them back into the wall to recharge them, that's not a spontaneous process. You're kind of driving that reaction backwards. And so again, the word spontaneous or non-spontaneous, one chemist throw around a lot. So we're going to use this chart to figure out how to predict spontaneity. So what I've done is written reactions in pairs, uh, one of the pairings being spontaneous and one not. So what we're going to do is look at the chart and realize, first of all, on the metal side, if an element is higher up uh, in the chart, it's more reactive. And so to, to react it spontaneously, we'd want to react it with an ion of a metal from lower in the chart. And so if we look at copper plus the zinc, we'll notice that copper metal is lower in the chart than zinc metal. Therefore, if I write it like this, copper trying to react with zinc ion, zinc ion's already given up its electrons, so it's not going to be spontaneous. It wouldn't react. We'd have to force that reaction, uh, but it wouldn't happen naturally. Uh, on the other hand, zinc metal being higher in the chart than copper ion, uh, copper ion uh, having lost electrons already, and zinc trying to lose electrons in this reaction, uh, this reaction would happen. So in other words, zinc is a more reactive metal than copper, so this particular reaction would be spontaneous. So in that pairing, 
it's going to abbreviate that SPONT, that would be spontaneous. Let's look at lead reacting with silver. If we look on the chart, we'll notice that lead sits about four above uh, silver in the chart. And so if I want this to react spontaneously, I'm going to have to pick the pairing where lead is in the metallic state still, not in the ion state. So that would make the first pairing spontaneous, the second would not be. Right, looking at the third reaction, magnesium and sodium sit right next to each other in this chart. Uh, sodium is higher, and so again, I'm going to want to pick the reaction where sodium is in the metal state and magnesium is not. So that would be the first pairing. Sodium would, would react successfully with magnesium ion, but not the other way around. Okay, let's look at the next one. This would be, uh, again, I'll remind you that uh, H+, plus, according to the Arrhenius theory, is an acid. And so we're basically saying, could calcium react with acid? Or does it have to happen the other way around? Well, if I position things here, I notice that hydrogen is quite a bit lower in the chart than calcium. And so I want to have this set up so the calcium metal is reacting with the hydrogen ion not the other way around. I, I would not be successful to react hydrogen uh, gas against calcium ion. That would not be spontaneous. This one would be. Okay, going up, uh, we've got about three more to look at. Uh, you'll notice, uh, probably you know from living life that gold is considered a precious metal. It's precious because it's so unreactive. So in this case, we noticed uh, for calcium against hydrogen that that metal did react with acid, but gold is an element below hydrogen in the chart. And so what that means is that gold metal will not react with hydrogen ion. Again, the spontaneous process would be the one that's uh, in the element state being higher in the chart. So hydrogen uh, gas reacting with gold ion would be spontaneous. This is why gold is precious metal. It does not react very much with anything, uh, including acids. So it doesn't corrode or, or change form very much. All right, uh, the next one, I'm going to go over to the nonmetal side now. So let's look at that side. Uh, we'll notice here that we have either fluorine gas reacting with chloride ion or chlorine gas reacting with fluoride ion. Well, again, we're going to use the chart the same way. The one that shows the, uh, the element higher in the chart being in the element form is going to be the spontaneous process. So here we have fluorine being higher than chlorine. So I'm going to predict this one would be spontaneous. The other one would not. In other words, fluorine can take electrons from chlorine, but not the other way around. Uh, chlorine is not as reactive as fluorine, therefore it can't take electrons away from fluorine. And then finally looking at another pairing, we have bromine and iodine. Uh, bromine is higher in the chart than iodine, so I would expect bromine could react and take iodide ion uh, electrons. And so we pick the spontaneous process being that. So that's about as easy as that chart is to use. You just want to find, to, to sort of summarize here, you want to uh, find the metal that's, or the non-metal that's higher in the chart and make sure that one's written in the element state. And if it's paired with something else in the chart lower down in the ion state, it will then uh, react spontaneously.